fall. It's uh, yeah. easy for it to fall, and the screen is not as bright. But still pretty good, I think. How much do you think it costs? Dude, 50 euros? Seriously? Okay, you don't know much about projectors, that's okay. 50, really? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, now more like 300. Sorry to tell you this. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, how much do you pay for your iPhone? About 500. Oh. This is more useful to me <laughs> than an iPhone. Uh, okay. How much was it we got? How much was it when we got it, or how much is it worth now? Yeah. Now you probably get that, you know, second hand for like fifty to a hundred. Yeah. I don't even think you could buy one like that anymore. I think it's uh, too out of date. Okay. There we go. All right. Next topic. So last time we were talking about scatter plots. And we were drawing these lines in here, and. Uh, I didn't tell you yet, but this, oh, that's really small. You can see, can't you? Yeah. Um, this is called the line of best fit. It's also called linear uh, regression. Or just regression often. Okay, so what we want to do in this lesson, um, we want to use the data x i's and y i's to make the equation here. Last time we just got the equation from the graph, we estimated it by measuring the slope. But what we would prefer is a way to calculate the equation exactly. Yeah. Who have I got? Ah, what happened to you? Really? Yeah, really? Okay. One, two, two? No. All right. Forty-nine. The f you got the 845.49 from city centre. No, 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 no. Kind of what? Perhaps. Okay, maybe I believe you. Uh, right. <laughs> so we have this line here. Y equals. Um, now we don't use M and C. We use A and B. I want to make sure I get the A and the B the right way around. Yeah, uh, y equals ax plus b. It's the same as mx plus c. I don't really know why in this chapter, but a lot of books use a and b instead of m and c. And in fact, on your calculator, it's a and b as well. So I'll stick to using a and b. So the question is, how can we make or find a and b for this line? So that's what we'll have a look at now. Okay, can I go down? Right, so let's imagine we have AX plus, sorry, Y equals AX plus B. And for example, let's make it easy. Let's say this is our first point, X1, Y1. So maybe somebody can tell me, if I want this line to be the best line, 
what am I trying to do? Um, in other words, why is this line why is this line better than this line? Or why is this line better than this line? What makes this the best line? Why is this the best? Can anyone try and explain that? You all feel happy that if I said, if I drew this line, that would be bad. And if I drew this line, that would be bad. So what makes this line the best? Near the dots. Near the dots, yeah. So what you're trying to do is if you find all these distances, see in the blue, you want to make this distance minimum. So we'll call these distances, for example, this one is E1, and maybe this one's E2, and this one's E3, and this one's E4, and this one's E5, for example. Now the only problem is, this distance will be positive, but these distances here will be negative. So what's an easy way to make it positive? How can you make a number positive easily? Uh, not that. You could use that, but something else, simpler. What's the, easy thing, the easiest thing you can do to make a number positive? And, so think about this, you have a positive or a negative number, and you want it to become positive, yes? And you would like um, the big numbers to still be big and the small numbers to still be small. Any ideas? What about what about if you have a number and you square it? Would it be positive? Yeah. And um, so rather than looking at this, the problem is some of these could be positive and some could be negative and maybe they cancel. Instead we'll look at this. So they're all positive as an example. So you want to make this a minimum. So you want a minimum for this. And in the exam they sometimes ask you to explain how to find this line. And you can explain it like this. And this method is called the least square method. You want the smallest squares in total. You got that? Yeah. So like I said, in the exam, sometimes they ask you to explain this word, least squares. So if you draw a picture, it can help you explain. You can say, the E is the... Yeah, what's a word to this... Uh, what word could you use for E? I used E on purpose. What word would describe what E is? Excellent. Something else. What about if I said error? You know this word? Yeah. So these E's are errors. You want them to be small. <coughs> you get the idea for these squares? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at one point as an example. Can I scroll down? Yeah? Nina? Yes, yeah. Um, okay, so for example, here is y equals ax plus b, and here is point x1, y1. So what is the formula for e1 here? Well, how high is this point? What is this height? Y1. And what is this height? Mm. It's not y1, because that's y1. Yeah, almost. Not AX plus B, AX1 plus B is this height in red. So if I do a minus, now I have this distance here, E1. I don't want E1. I want E1 squared. 
squared. E2 squared will be the same. E AX2 plus B minus Y2 squared. And so on. So then the total for all of the errors would be this. The sum i equals 1 to n axi plus b minus yi squared. So what are we, when we want to find the A and the B, what are we trying to do to this? What's our goal here? Do you know what I mean? What, are you, what am I trying to uh, make here? What do I want this to be? Do I want this to be big? No. no. What do I want? I want this to be small. So let's have a look at a very... Uh, Simple example with just a couple of numbers before we go on. So here's my x, here's my x, and here's my y. Here's my y. Uh, needs to be a bit bigger, yeah. How's that? Well, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah. So let's say x is one, two, three, and y um, is. Uh, Three. I don't know. Uh, uh, four, and uh, not quite five. We'll say four point five, and let's make this. I don't know, three point nine. Okay. So just very quickly, let me just. You don't have to. You, I don't actually want you to write this down. This one here. I just want to help you see something that's happening. Uh, very quickly, let me just put in a scatter plot. And I won't even bother putting in names, I'll just say X and Y. Oh, too big, too big, too big. Okay, so let me put a calculation here for um, A equals and then B equals. Right, so I want you to look at this graph and roughly guess, what would be a rough guess for B? Roughly for B. Remember, B is where it crosses the y-axis because it's AX plus B. So if you imagine a line here, yeah, well we say something like about 2. And what about the slope, the A? There's a rough guess. What do you think? So you go out one unit, and we go up one unit, we go out one unit, and we go up, what's that, 0.6, so, I don't know, will we say something like A is 0.8, something like this, yeah. Right, let's calculate the E squared. So the formula, um, what was the formula, I just gave you a second ago for E, it was A, A times X plus B minus, y and the <coughs> uh, 6 and 7 so this one I don't want to change and this one I don't want to change so oh and I forgot I need to square it uh, don't do why are you doing this don't annoy me I need a bracket there so the first uh, e squared is 0 0.04 the next one is 0 0.09, and the next one is 0 0.01. If I change the A's and B's, maybe I can make the total here smaller. This is the total. Uh, so maybe my A was a little bit too big. Maybe I make it a little bit smaller. Did I make it better or worse? This is the total here. Well, it was 0 0.14, so I made it much worse. 
Yeah. Uh, what about if I make it a bit bigger? Um, yeah, that's better, isn't it? 0 0.06. What about if I change this a little bit, make it 1.9? worse okay and so on now of course you can't do it like this in real life you can't guess so does anyone have any ideas on how you could find the a and the b to make this a minimum something maybe we did in semester one how to make something a minimum something we did at the end of semester one uh oh Are you doing that thing where you think you know the answer, but you're too shy to say, or you really don't know the answer? <laughs> Thank you for being honest, Albert. Um, anyone else? Are we thinking about don't know or too shy? What about if I said derivatives? <laughs> yeah. So, how do you use a derivative to make a minimum? Yeah, you want the derivative to equal zero. So what's the variable here? <coughs> what's the variable? Which, uh, which is the thing which is like the x? Because it's not quite y and x. It's not like this. Uh, the x is actually a number, not a variable. So what's the, what was the thing that I was changing here? What was I changing here? The a and the b. So the a and the b, they're like the variables, aren't they? Let me just uh, turn my pad back on. <coughs> okay. So, if you think about it like this, um, if I call this, oh, what letter will I call it? I don't want to call it Y. I'll call it Big E. Yeah, why not? So what you're looking for is D E D. What? Oh, come on, somebody. Don't be shy. Don't be scared if you're wrong. A equal zero. Yeah, can you see what I'm saying here? And then the next one, D, E, T, B equals zero. Because the A and the B they're what you're changing. But the x and the y, they're like constants. Yeah? I don't know if you're doing that thing where you don't understand or you do, but you are making me think you don't understand to make me worry. Are we okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, I used to do the proof in class, but the proof actually takes uh, about 30 minutes to do. So I think, since it's not on the exam, I'll skip the proof. But if you wanted to try at home, if you differentiate this with A and differentiate it with B, you'll make two equations and you have two unknowns. The two unknowns are A and B. You can solve these two and get an answer for A and B. So we have some maths here. And then we'll pretend we got to the answer then at the end. Um, the proof, it's not that it's Difficult because this is this is only a quadratic, isn't it? And you know how to differentiate a quadratic. And then when you differentiate the quadratic, what type of equation does it become? What's the derivative of a quadratic is what? Is it cubic? No, what type is it? I'm not going you do know this. The derivative of a quadratic makes a no, you do know it. I know you know this one. Think about a quadratic in your head and differentiate it. What type of equation do you get? Go on. Speak. Cool. Don't be shy. 
Oh, come on, come on. What type of equation do you get when you differentiate a quadratic? Do you get a cubic? No. So what do you get? A linear. Thank you. Thank you. You threw me a bone. Thank you. So, this here is a quadratic. When you differentiate it, it's a linear. You have two linears. What's the name of that problem? It's a degree two system, which you remember how to solve, hopefully. So, anyways, the process is not very difficult, but it's very long. So we'll skip the process and go straight to the answer for what the a and the b is. So the a equals, I have it here, n, and I'll explain what the s means in a moment, sxy minus sxsy over n, sxx minus sx sx or sx squared if you want and then b equals sy over n minus a sx over n okay so you definitely need these two formulas um, so if you want to write this next bit down do you have this yeah so these are the two formulas for a and b So look, if you ever find yourself waiting in GNIB or waiting on the bus and you have 30 minutes, you can try to see if you can go from this to this. It's either that or, you know, using Instagram on your phone. So <laughs> I know which one I do. <laughs> but since I don't have a smartphone, my choices are limited. Okay, can I scroll down? Right, so let me just explain what the uh, S means. So when I write Sx, that's just short for the sum of all the Xs. If I write Sy, that is short for sum of all the Ys. What do you think if I write Sxy? Sum of the Xs multiplied by the Ys. And then SXX is the sum of XX, yeah, which is the same as the sum of X squared. And finally, if I wrote SYY, I just mean the sum of Y multiply Y, which is the sum of Y squared. So what we'll do is we'll go back to my example and we'll use the formula and see what we get for A and B. Did you write down the formula? Yeah? So this is really key. Now please note, um, in the exam, the formula isn't written like this. They actually write a little bit differently. And I think it's actually better for you if you memorize the formula this way. Now it's not as difficult to memorize as you might think. Because if you look up here, um, this here, what's this the same as? Sy divided by n. Yeah, the mean of y. And then Sx divided by n, the mean of x. So actually you could write b as the average of y minus a times the average of x. Or another way to write it is the average of y equals a average x plus b. And this looks familiar, doesn't it? This is like y equals ax plus b. So this one's, I think, easy to remember. If you start from here, you can go backwards. This one's a little bit trickier to remember, but the, there is kind of a pattern. If you look here, it goes x, y, x, and y. And here it's x, x, x and x but the only difference is um, in the first one it's the sum of x multiplied by y whereas here is the sum of x then multiplied by the sum of y there's a multiply between them here anyway let's have a look at the example I had a minute ago okay so I'm going to delete this graph here 
Right, so the first thing I want to get is, let's get Sx. So that is the sum of all the x's. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, 6. So that's easy. Uh, now, Sy, that's the sum of all the y's. So that's uh, going to be 11.4. Okay, what do I need to do next? What else is in my formula? I have an x, I have a y, uh, I have an xy. So I need to make a new column here, which is xy. So that is x multiplied by y. So we have 3, 7.8, 13.5, and then the sum of xy, that will be the sum of all of these here. Oops. And there's only one thing left which I haven't calculated. What's that? What's missing if you look at the formula? Yeah, sum of xx. So here I need to have an xx or an x squared. So that would be 1, 4, 9. So the total here is 14. Okay, can you read out the formula? What's the formula? It's n. So what's n here? It's 3. 3 multiplied by s x y. Isn't it? Yeah. So 3 multiplied by 14. No, 24.3. Minus s x multiplied s y. Divided by n, which is 3, multiplied by s x x which is 14, minus Sx multiplied Sx. 0 0.75, which is, you know, close to what I was guessing. Uh, and what's the formula for B? That's um, Sy over N minus A, which is we have here previously, times Sx, which is 6 over 3. Plus. Uh, did I get that right? 2.3 seems right. Uh, F2. That is Sy minus A times Sx over 3. Is that the formula? That's what I said, wasn't it? Well, I can know if I'm right or not because Excel has a built-in function to calculate the A and the B. So I can check with Excel here. So the function to calculate A is called slope. And we highlight the Y, comma, highlight the X. So this should give me the same answer for A, I hope. Yeah. And then we can check the B, I think it's called intercept. Yeah. And I can highlight the y, comma, highlight the x. I should get 2.3, and I do. So we know uh, these are the best values of a and b to use. So this is much better than guessing. Yeah. Uh, okay, now, let's see if there's anything else. So why might this be important? Well, for example, if I go down here, since you're economics students, let's go back to economics. Um, here is Q and here is P. So you're doing some research and you have some information about the price uh, and quantity for, let's say, um, we'll go with but the um, demand goes down, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And supply goes up. So we'll just go with we'll just go with uh, demand. So for different prices, there's different demand. So let's say here's some data here. Now I know when you do economics with Donald, in your economic mm -hmm. class, everything is always nice and straight. But of course, real life, not like this. So you'll have some data points here. And then maybe there'll be one weird point out here, and then it could be you know, something, something like this. And maybe there's one weird point out here, outlier. 
So you want to find this line here. Now you have a way to find it. But why is that useful? Well, that's useful because maybe you want to change the price. You're, you might say, okay, what if I make the price 10 euros? What would be the demand from the consumers? So if you have this line, you can calculate what the uh, demand would be. Because, see here, there's a gap, you're missing some data. So you might decide, okay, well if it's 11 euros, what will the demand be? And this is something that you can do now if you have this line, which we now have a way to find this line. Yeah. Another common example um, uh, will be uh, like with height and weight. So you have your um, height here and your weight here, your mass here, and you have your line here. So what you can do, if you have your formula for y equals ax plus b, that's like uh, your weight or your mass really equals a h for height plus b. If you know your height, you can put it into the formula and know what your weight should be. So you can pick a height and then you can get a weight here. Some lines should pass through the origin, some lines don't pass through the origin, and this one here, this one, should it pass through the origin or not? No. I don't know. I feel like if you have no height, then you should have no weight. I think so. Don't you think so too? If your height is zero centimeters, I feel like your weight should be zero kilograms. I think. But often what happens is um, your line doesn't go through the center. And it's not that it's wrong, it's just because maybe, if I can go down and try and draw this a bit better, um, maybe your data has a little bit of a curve to it. So when you draw a straight line, it doesn't actually pass through the center, even though maybe it should pass through the center. So I think height and weight might be one of these examples where it's not quite a straight line, maybe there's a little curve to it, and this means you won't go through the center, but uh, that's okay, that's okay, because most people uh, will be around about 100 centimeters, like if they're not going to be nearly zero centimeters. Um, but this is also important in the exam. If you extend your line too far, and you have a curve shape to it, if you use the values here, you get good uh, estimations. But what if you use a number here? Well, you think from your line you should get, whatever, 100 kilograms, but maybe the true value is much less. So when you use this method, you need to be careful not to extend too far past the max or min. So if most of your data is here, you should only maybe go a little bit past it and you shouldn't use the line over here. This part is forbidden then. You just want to stick with near where your data is. So there's nothing too crazy about this lesson. What I've done is I've given you some data and you can practice calculating the line. Remember, I say it again, that in the formula book, the formula won't be written like this. It's written differently, but I think it's much quicker and easier if you use the four uh, versions here. You'll get the same answer, but this is a little bit quicker than what's in the formula book. Okay. And actually, the other thing as well in the exam is, sometimes in the exam, they give you these numbers already, which is nice, because then you can do it really quickly. So if it's a section A question, they'll probably give you these numbers. If it's a section B question, maybe they won't give them to you. Okay.
So I'll let you try these for a few minutes then. Um, you can put the light back on then. I don't think this. Yeah. I found, I found my book. It was in the office. All right. Marcelo, can you get the light, please? Can I close this? Yeah, okay.